Without a doubt, what I have learned from doing professional development with educators is that they aren't always worried that they don't know what's new. And it isn't necessarily that they haven't heard of things or watched tutorials. Their bigger concerns come from taking the tutorials and knowing about the products and deciding how do I apply that to the age group that I teach? So how do I make something like Edmodo work for my age group? So instead of doing tutorials or teaching about new products, what I want to do is show how educators can use products. That to me is the most relevant form of professional development that is almost missing in some professional development opportunities. It's not the what or the why, but it's the how. How do I do that? So I'm going to give you a little glimpse of this. If you're not familiar with Edmodo. It is a social networking site that is student and teacher friendly. It's secure and it's wonderful for classrooms. Now I'm using Edmodo because I um, use Edmodo. That's what I used as an educator in my classroom. There are other products um, out there that are just as wonderful. Schoology and Big Campus are two others that are very comparable to Edmodo. If you have watched a tutorial on them or you know something about them, many of the things that I'm going to do are very versatile and able to be used on those, on those sites as well. So it's not necessarily specific to Edmodo. Edmodo is just my product of choice. So I obviously am at my webpage. Um, it's where you're going to see all of, of everything that I belong to. I belong to a lot of things. Um, but I've created a room per se or a group that's just specific to learning and training. Um, I do have classroom and school groups. I have, um, you know, groups that I belong to in MotoCon, which is a conference for using in Moto. Um, I have all those on the side. But what I'm going to focus on today is how if you were teaching a classroom full of kids and you were planning to use this, what would you do? Well, we're going to start with just a couple brief little things to revisit in case you're new and you don't know a whole lot. First of all, over here, this is the group code. This is what everybody that wants to join your group must have. This code is very, very important. It's how they get into your group. So that is a must for joining your group. Now what I want, most want to focus on is how you would make this relevant to a classroom. So let's focus on a couple things. Um, at the top, you see there are places where you can post a note, an alert, assignment, quiz, or poll. I'm going to hit those five things and um, give you a little brief introduction into how I think each would be used. So perhaps the note. This is um, just a simple status, if you will. Um, it can be a question. It can be something that is thought-provoking. Um, it can be a question in which you also attach a file, you attach a link, or you pull something from your library. So for instance, um, I might post a question um, if I'm teaching about um, some, some math. I might teach, post a question that says, um, what are some polygons you might find in the real world? And that gives students an opportunity to I'm going to post that to learning and training, and I'm going to send that. That gives students opportunity to post um, answers to something open-ended. Um, you want to obviously give them something open-ended if you give them a, a, a question which you're answering yes or no. There's little to no way for them to expand, contribute, learn from that. So obviously if you're posting a note, you want to be posting something that is um, open-ended and thought-provoking. So there you go. Also, this could be a simple reminder. Um, your books, your book money is due. Oops, wrong, wrong place. Um, this could be just a simple reminder. And you just put that there and you pop it in the group and there you go. So here um, we're looking at notes, simple, short, not big deals at all. Um, next we're going to talk about alerts. 